Hello, this is Julian from AWS. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to retrain automatically a SageMaker uh, model that you already trained. Okay, and the rationale for this would be uh, once you've done experimenting, once you've uh, figured out the right algo, the right parameters for your uh, model, um, probably as new data keeps uh, flowing into your uh, platform, you want to train again and again. It could be every day, it could be every week, but if you have a lot of data, a lot of streaming data maybe, it could be every hour, why not, every two hours to have extremely fresh models. And obviously no one uh, wants to do that manually. So um, this is what we're going to do today. We're going to use a Lambda function, we're going to schedule it, and uh, this function will run on a schedule and train um, our model again and again. Again, we'll see how, uh, how we can do this, uh, hopefully in a, in a clever fashion. So of course we need a model to start from. So I, I took um, this example from the uh, collection of uh, Amazon SageMaker examples that you can find on GitHub. I think I've shown you this one before. Um, this one trains um, the built-in image classification algo on an image data set. Okay, but feel free to take any of your jobs. It's going to be exactly the same thing. So I've trained this before. It's um, it's there. Uh, it's even live, I guess. <laughs> I can probably still have the uh, still see the endpoint for this. Okay, so this is trained um, already. We can see it here. Okay, and now the game will be. I, I want to train it again and again. So, uh, as you probably know, you can schedule Lambda functions. Uh, using CloudWatch events. Okay, so CloudWatch is the, the monitoring service in AWS and it has a, a feature called CloudWatch events that lets you schedule activities and uh, specifically you can trigger Lambda functions. So this sounds like a cool idea, right? Uh, let's, uh, let's try and do this. So let's maybe first look at the code of our Lambda function. So how does that look? Um, so here it is. It's uh, it's Python. It's not a lot of code, as you can see. And I'm gonna show nine numbers that will make it easier for me and you to to relate to what I'm telling you. So um, the the idea here is that um, of course there is an existing job. Okay, so it's unlikely we actually want to change all parameters for this job. I guess uh, the location of data will be the same, right? The S3 location for the, the training set and the validation set uh, are the same. We're going to, of course, add more data in there or different data, but why change the location? You know, I don't think we need to. Uh, probably want to keep the same output location. We want to keep, if we add a VPC settings or et cetera, we, you know, we don't want to change those. So the ones we, we're we going to change here are uh, uh, maybe the instance type and the instance count. Maybe we want to train on more instances or more powerful instances, because as we have more data, you know, maybe we just want to uh, run faster. And uh, one thing we'll need to provide as well is a, 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 a prefix, a name prefix for all the jobs that we're going to create because training uh, job names are uh, unique in SageMaker. So we need to uh, add some um, some different names here. So um, the overall idea of this function is to uh, grab a few things from environment variables. As you can see here, our line five, we're going to uh, grab uh, the name of the training job that we want to uh, uh, to train again, okay, the existing job. Um, we're going to grab the prefix for the new job names, okay, and we're going to grab the instance type that we want to use for the this training, the instance count, okay, and everything else we will just copy from the previous job, okay. So as you can see here, this is pretty much what I do. Line eight, I describe that previous training job, okay. Um, and I build a new name using the prefix. Uh, I, like I said, read those environment variables and, um, and uh, update the actual uh, training parameters from the job that I just uh, described. 
okay and then pretty much i can call uh, a sagemaker dot create training job right unfortunately one of those parameters uh, vpc config uh, is uh, is a bit annoying because um, it does not accept uh, a, an empty value, uh, which, which is painful. So as you can see here on line 22, we can provide empty hyperparameters. We can provide on line 24 empty tags, but Mr. VPC config is just being difficult. So it's either set to something valid or not set at all. And this is why I have this silly code duplication here. And uh, hopefully somebody in the Bodo project can can fix that. I opened a, I opened a, an issue on that one. I think it's just not a consistent API here. Anyway, um, this is what I'm doing, right? I'm just uh, reusing lots of those uh, training parameters, like uh, input data config, output data config, topic condition, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? Feel free to tweak them as well if if you'd like. And the ones that I potentially updated are, like I said, uh, resource config. And uh, of course the the new name, right? And this is it, really. This is just a simple lambda function um, that that I call, right? Very simple. Okay, so here it is. Now we need to deploy it, okay? And we need to create uh, an event source, which would be the CloudWatch event. So of course you could you could do all of that uh, using Boto3. You could uh, use uh, CloudFormation. Uh, hopefully you're not going to click in the console to do this. Please don't do that. Um, automate, automate, automate. And uh, being super lazy, I'm going to use the, the serverless framework to, to do this. So uh, I'm sure you're familiar with this. It's uh, an open source project that lets you uh, easily deploy uh, Lambda functions and event sources like uh, you know, the API gateway and, and uh, everything else. And specifically uh, here, it's, it's interesting because uh, this also supports CloudWatch events. So the only thing I need to write uh, in addition to my function is a small uh, configuration file. Um, and uh, here we go again. So uh, this is deployed in AWS. It's a Python function. We need to have uh, IAM permissions, of course, describe training job and create training job, like as we just saw. Um, and uh, we need an extra one, which is the uh, the authorization to actually pass the SageMaker role, because SageMaker itself has a role, okay? And uh, uh, being allowed to call uh, SageMaker APIs, like these two here, is one thing. Uh, being allowed to run with the same permissions as the SageMaker service is different. So it's not enough to have those two. We need to be able to pass the SageMaker role, right? To run with uh, with SageMaker uh, permissions. Okay, so this is what we need basically. Um, okay, and stage for that function is going to be dev. Region is US East one. Uh, the handler is just the entry point for the function you just saw. We're going to schedule this function every three minutes, uh, which is way too low, but for demo purposes, it works pretty well. I don't think you want to do this in production. And uh, here I can use this uh, rate uh, syntax, but you can also provide a cron uh, expression if you like that better, right? If you need to schedule uh, on Monday and, and Wednesday at whatever time, you know, uh, every 30 minutes, fine, <laughs> you can do that. Okay, here I'm just going to keep it simple and run every three minutes. And then I'm going to pass my environment variable, so the, the name of the previous uh, training job, uh, a prefix for the new jobs, the instance type and the instance count. And these are environment variables for the Lambda, basically. So let's just deploy this thing, which is as difficult as calling serverless deploy. Okay, so it's going to package everything, package the Lambda function, and then it's going to run a CloudFormation stack, uh, creating the Lambda function and uh, creating the event source. In this case, the uh, the event, the CloudWatch event. Okay, so maybe if we jumped uh, to CloudFormation, we'd see that running. Uh, let's take a quick look. Here it is. And we're not doing much, so it should be a reasonably fast stack. Okay. Updating. What is what is this thing doing? 
Okay, created the lambda function. Blah blah blah. Okay, so I guess it needs to set up the the CloudWatch uh, event thing. Do we already see the lambda in here? Uh, I guess so. We have a new function. So here it is. Uh, yeah, here, that's the one. Okay, yeah, so we can see it's missing the uh, the trigger. So uh, that's probably what CloudFormation is building right now. Is it done? Oh, almost done. And as we can see, as we'll see here in a second, let's just reload this. We'll see that uh, this function is actually triggered by CloudWatch, okay? Which is exactly what we want, okay? And it will uh, then output uh, CloudWatch to its log to CloudWatch logs, and it's uh, uh, it's uh, allowed to call SageMaker, and it's also allowed to pass the SageMaker role, okay? That's that's what we see here. And again, here's your code, okay? So. This is complete, so let's refresh this, and hopefully we now see the source for the event that triggers this. And there you go. Okay, so this function is ready, it's configured, it's going to be triggered by CloudWatch events. Um, and uh, so we have to wait for a couple of minutes, right? And uh, it should start training. So let's look at the SageMaker console and let's look at the training jobs. And uh, within a couple of minutes, we're going to see uh, this thing, this thing running, right? So this is really, um, um, as you can see, right, this is the serverless framework, and again, this is a very, very simple way to use it. Uh, you can you can use this in uh, in in many many different ways, uh, and uh, and many different uh, combinations. But this is just uh, this is just too good to pass, right? I mean, this uh, this way of uh, of defining event sources uh, is just is just too easy to pass. I think this this is great, right? I know you have a uh, th that framework has a lot of fans. Has a lot of fans. So, uh, how do we do on time here? Come on, function. I don't think it's been three minutes yet. Now we have to wait for a little bit. Okay, should have said one minute. Would have been much faster. Okay, anything else we could look at in here? So we saw the code. Uh, yeah, we see the environment variables. So, let's say you, if you wanted to update those. Um, of course, you could uh, redeploy the you could redeploy the function using the uh, again serverless deploy right and deploy again with a, a different configuration. Uh, you could also update them. Um, there is a there is a of course a, a lambda API to update. Uh, I think it's called update function configuration, um, and uh, and this allows you to update. Um, environment variables, of course. So if you needed even more uh, instances or if you wanted to try a different instance type, of course, you could just update those. And, and yeah, I guess you could uh, you could maybe uh, mess with the console as well, but you know, it's never quite a good idea to do that. All right, so I guess it's been three minutes and uh, we see now we have a first job firing up, okay? And um, and it uh, uses our uh, name prefix, okay? And um, it, it, the prefix is completed with the uh, the date and time, right? Which is convenient, I suppose. And if we look at the parameters here, well, we're seeing two P3, um, uh, two Excel instances running, and that's pretty much what we wanted, right? And and the rest is going to be the same because we just copied those parameters. So. There you go. That's a simple way to do, to train. Uh, and uh, if we wait for a few more minutes, we'll see another job firing up. Again, don't do this in production, especially with P3s, which tend to cost a bit of money. Um, but you could use any frequency here. And if you need to retrain automatically every hour, every two hours, well, just update the frequency to that. 
Um, so then uh, once the, those jobs are, are complete, of course, you have a model, okay? And, um, and uh, you could do uh, whatever you want with those. You could uh, then proceed and, and deploy them uh, automatically. You could have uh, maybe a, a Lambda function doing a similar thing for, uh, for deployment, right? Updating the endpoints, etc. Or maybe you want to uh, take that trained model in S3, run some tests, and uh, and maybe you 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 know maybe you don't want to do automatic deployment for models because you, you need to run QA etc etc. But you could use a similar technique to uh, to um, move on to deployment uh, for you know, your testing environment. Hopefully not uh, maybe not production just like that. Okay. Well, if we wait for uh, for a minute or two, we'll see another one. But I think you get the point. Um, and I, I don't want this video to be to be too long, right? So there you go. Uh, Deep, automatic retraining for lazy people like me in just a few lines of Python. Um, of course, this code is on uh, GitHub and uh, I will put the GitHub link in the description of the video. Well, I hope you like that one. Uh, I think it's fun. And uh, thank you for listening and talk to you next time. Bye-bye.